Hello and welcome to the El Camino studio to lesson three, HP pencil drawing. We're working on page three of the Camino coloring book and uh, the scene we have is uh, just west of the Pyrenees Mountains in the Spanish uh, territory in the Basque country. In the first part of this uh, lesson we were just putting a thin wash of uh, shading and uh, graphite over the whole surface. We were always working over the whole uh, picture at the same time. So now in uh, this part we're going to go back and keep adding layers of uh, darker and uh, more intense and uh, heavier lines to all the objects in this uh, drawing. In this drawing, I've uh, made the decision to put my uh, sun, the light source, on the uh, right upper right uh, corner of the drawing, somewhere up in the sky above there. And so all my shadows are going to be uh, done accordingly. Choosing uh, a light source is uh, important. You have to always choose your light source at the beginning and keep consistent throughout the whole drawing. If you're working from a photograph, you'll pretty well have your light source already chosen for you, but there's no reason why you can't change and uh, do something different. This uh, scene here in, the, in uh, Spain it was a somewhat cloudy day and it wasn't uh, very bright so the shadows are pretty indistinct. So I had lots of latitude to choose my light source. When I'm doing a more technical architectural drawing, I have to be a little bit more careful when I'm dealing with the shadows that uh, they uh, are accurate. But uh, when you're doing a drawing like this, it, uh, the difference in the angle of the shadow is so insignificant that it uh, doesn't really alter the drawing in any way. It's only when you get into objects that are very close to you in the drawing that uh, you can have some irregularities in the direction and length and of the shadows. But for these drawings, I would just uh, consider them all to be parallel to each other from the light source. This bridge uh, had uh, was a very comfortable bridge to cross. All the, uh, the stones on the deck were uh, relatively flat and smooth. But I remember one bridge along the Camino. It was a... Uh, Quite a substantial bridge, uh, somewhat larger than this one, and uh, instead of using the, the stones that were more flat, they used just used round stones. And it was the most difficult bridge to cross. It was just, even with the uh, hiking boots on, you could still feel the sharp rocks. I don't know how it, uh, over so many years, it hadn't worn itself uh, smooth. Anyway, back to the drawing. In the early stages of uh, when we first started this drawing, it uh, I find that it's simpler and easier to uh, keep the pencil not quite so sharp, a little more uh, worked in worked into, and that uh, allows for uh, an easier coat of uh, light shading over the whole area. But now that we're going over it and we're starting to work on uh, finer and finer details. Now is a good time to make sure to always keep your pencil sharp. And uh, when you go when you sharpen your pencil, when you go back to the drawing, always start with the lines that are going to require the sharpest thinnest lines and uh, work your way to the thicker lines. That way uh, it'll cut down a, a little bit on your sharpening time 
that'll make uh, the drawing just so much crisper. Just a little note on uh, erasing. I don't really tend to do very much erasing because I'm always working at such a, a light, uh, light pace and a light uh, coating in my layers. But if you do find that you have to erase something, then uh, there's a, you can get a little erasing shield, which makes it uh, easier to erase just a targeted area. What you have to try to avoid is to avoid trying, trying to erase too large of an area that uh, ends up just smearing and uh, moving the graphite around. So uh, only erase if you really find no alternative to fix whatever needs to be fixed. It's easier just to work light and uh, keep adding. Taking away is always so much more difficult. Right now I'm working on the lower right hand corner, the, the trees and bushes below the bridge and uh, the darker side of the bridge. So this uh, this takes a much more saturated and heavier approach. And you can see that uh, I'm working a lot heavier than I was anywhere else in the drawing. In uh, drawing two dimensions, uh, there's a, an idea that we call uh, aerial perspective. And that's when you look on the horizon, the mountains in the distance uh, are a little more grayed and uh, less saturated in color. And the closer objects get to you, the more intense and uh, sharper the lines are. So we, uh, when we do the black and white drawing, we're going to try to use a little bit of that aerial perspective by making the foreground heavier and darker and more detailed, the middle ground a little bit less, and then the distant uh, background would be more pale and uh, muted. And the more muted the background becomes, then it, uh, you know that the distance is farther and farther away. Once I uh, finish on the dark side of the bridge there, I'm going to start uh, working on the, the bricks and stones of the, the bridge in the foreground. And uh, I'm going to work heavier, but I'm only going to increase the darkness of uh, some of the lines. I'm not going to darken the whole object too much because uh, I want to keep that lightness of the bridge. So I'm just going to work on uh, darkening, darkening strategic uh, shadow lines and uh, smaller surfaces. Once I've finished uh, shading this uh, dark side of the wall, the side of the bridge there, I'm going to go back and uh, heavy up the uh, underside of the overhanging bricks at the top there and uh, sort of bring out a little bit more of the three-dimensional shape. Normally you would assume that uh, the shadow would be the same darkness, darkness from uh, top to bottom, but it uh, isn't the case because you have a lot more reflected light bouncing back off the clouds and uh, the environment. So there, the intensity of the dark shadows is closest to where the overhang is. And I try to under understate the uh, shadows required on the deck of the bridge because that uh, makes a little bit more contrast between the wall and the ground and that makes it just a little bit more three-dimensional as well. Every once in a while, just uh, put down the pencil and step back and have a look at the drawing from a bit of a distance, say around four, five, six, seven feet away and see how it uh, all ties together. Then you can go back and just uh, keep working on smaller and smaller little details and just trying to bring out a little bit more here and a little bit more there. And uh, 
don't go too far because you, you don't want to make the drawing too heavy. So just uh, continue working on it. And the, the closer you get to the end, the more you're working on tinier, de tinier details and uh, the less progress you're going to see. But it does, cumulatively, it, uh, it all adds up. Sometimes when we do drawings, we find that uh, they end up being just a little bit too crisp and sharp. So what I'm doing now with my finger is I'm just uh, sort of varnishing it a little bit and uh, smoothing out uh, the graphite, taking a little bit of the edge off things and giving a little bit of a tint to the walls. And uh, this helps to tie the whole picture together a little bit. And, uh, and if you have anything that's a little bit too overworked, it'll help uh, tone it down a little bit. But uh, it's best to do that with a paper towel. I use my finger because uh, it's not a good idea to use your fingers because there's oils on your fingers that will eventually uh, darken the paper. And we don't uh, really need that. So there we have our black and white drawing of this color rendering. And uh, we can see a little bit of the uh, colors and textures and uh, it's uh, worked fairly well. So I hope you enjoy doing this uh, HP graphite pencil drawing. The next one we'll be doing is page four of the Camino coloring book. And with that, we're going to use just three pencil crayons, red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors. We're going to try to do a full color drawing just using those three pencils.